Number 10. Released by HBO, Mommy Dead and Dearest chronicles the events that led to Dee Dee Blanchard's death. It details how she committed factitious disorder imposed on another, or what was once known as Munchausen syndrome by proxy, on her daughter, Gypsy Rose. Blanchard essentially made it seem like her daughter suffered from a number of terrible ailments. While upholding the lie, the mother put her child through unnecessary surgeries and other terrible things. Gypsy Rose then conspired with her boyfriend, Nicholas Gotta John, to kill Blanchard. It's unsettling to think of the horrors that pushed a daughter to slay her own mother. No matter how you view it, Mommy Dead and Dearest makes for one creepy viewing experience. Number 9. Back in September of 1977, Mormon missionary Kirk Anderson was supposedly abducted and abused by a woman named Joyce McKinney. The story became known as the Manacled Mormon Case. This terrifying story was extensively covered in the British tabloids, specifically the warring rivals Daily Express and Daily Mirror. The documentary tabloid conveys these events with unnerving detail and is even narrated by Joyce McKinney herself. That shocking choice immediately brings viewers closer to the case than they expected. As a result, those watching will further question the story that she weaves because it has multiple viewpoints and perspectives. Many will find the documentary's contents troubling, especially considering who gets to tell the story. Number 8. This troubling documentary tells the story of the 2009 Iconic State Parkway crash, a nasty traffic collision that resulted in eight deaths. It was caused by a woman named Diane Schuler, the titular Aunt Diane. On that fateful day, she was the one traveling on the parkway in the wrong direction. It's a very disconcerting story that is rooted in unimaginable tragedy. Throughout the documentary, upsetting questions are raised about Schuler's state of mind. Between footage of the accident, interviews with grieving individuals, and some rather uncomfortable topics, there's something wrong with Aunt Di and puts forth a very uneasy atmosphere. Number 7. The story of John DuPont was famously captured in the 2014 film Foxcatcher, which earned five Oscar nominations. Team Foxcatcher was released two years later and serves as an eerie companion piece, retelling the story with a more grounded, and arguably more disturbing, angle. This Netflix documentary uses harrowing archival footage to tell its story. Viewers are also given a rather personal and alarming glimpse into the mind of a killer. By incorporating all these details, viewers get a sense of what led to DuPont's horrifying actions. The documentary explores how mental illness, wealth, and power can create a nightmarish situation. Number 6. The Shining is one of the most elusive films of all time, inviting endless interpretations and readings since its release in 1980. Room 237 honors the movie's legacy and examines some of the most profound and intriguing readings. Topics like American imperialism, Greek mythology, and the Holocaust are explored in depth. The famous conspiracy that Stanley Kubrick helped fake the moon landing is also covered. Room 237 ultimately stands as a spooky, complex, and endlessly riveting glimpse into the granddaddy of all horror films. Its off-putting interpretations prove to be nearly as frightening as the movie itself. Number 5. Much has been written about the Zodiac killings. At this point, the case is among the most discussed serial tragedies in American history. This is the Zodiac speaking is one of the most definitive documentaries about the case. It contains interviews with retired police officers and criminal profilers. Their first-hand accounts of the case give viewers unfettered access into the distressing story that has captivated Americans and true crime enthusiasts for decades. The disturbing story covers how Zodiac targeted innocent people and flippantly discussed his crimes. All the interviews in the documentary play on his notoriety. Seeing the impact the case has had on people's psyches is arguably even scarier than the story itself. Number 4. Released in 1982, The Killing of America argues that the United States is in the midst of a messy cultural collapse. The title has both metaphorical and literal layers to it. Much of the film is centered around the incredible wave of violence that struck America in the 60s and 70s. This includes the assassinations of John and Robert Kennedy, the rise of serial killers, and a very distressing shooting. It's a shocking documentary that leaves viewers feeling extremely uncomfortable. 
featuring genuine footage of violence and interviews with the likes of criminals like Sirhan Sirhan and Ed Kemper, the killing of America makes for one distressing watch. Number 3. Having aired on the British station Channel 5, The Cannibal That Walked Free is a nightmarish glimpse into one of humanity's darkest crimes. Through the lens of Japanese criminalist Sei Sagawa, it explores the psychology behind cannibalism. In June of 1981, Sagawa killed and desecrated a student named René Hardevilt. But he was allowed to walk free thanks to a legal snafu between France and Japan. This documentary delves into Sagawa's crimes and the psychology behind his actions through interviews with Sagawa himself. Seeing this perturbing story get conveyed through the lens of the perpetrator can be skin-crawling. For many, it may prove too much to bear. Number 2. Based on a non-fiction book of the same name, Wisconsin Death Trip is a sinister docadrama about a turbulent time in Wisconsin history. The story follows a series of disturbing occurrences that plagued the state in the late 19th century. This includes the abandoning of children, homicides, arson, and supernatural delusion. As if the subject matter wasn't troubling enough, the docadrama is also shot in silent black and white to convey the style of old movies. The aged cinematography immediately puts viewers on edge. Meanwhile, the contemporary newspaper accounts are chillingly narrated by Ian Holm. The combined effect is one of deep and uncomfortable surrealism. Number 1. Eileen Warnos was a sex worker who killed seven clients between 1989 and 1990. Two years later, Nick Broomfield made a documentary. Most of the film is centered around Broomfield's attempts at conducting an interview with Warnos in prison. As she discusses the case, viewers witness the troubling defense that she put forth and the implications that it represented. The interviews with War Nose are also bone-chilling. It's clear that her life was full of extensive pain and suffering at every stage. Years later, the documentary became an enormous inspiration for Charlize Theron, who would later win an Oscar for playing War Nose and Monster.